Good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Xin Yue. And uh, I was a urban planner before I come to US. And after I came to US, I I tried to avoid anything related to technology because I don't. I, I almost failed my programming uh, course when I was in college in China. But unfortunately, for any master of arts, even master of arts in geography. Uh, our department required me to take an introduction to GIS course. I was very reluctant to take that course. Uh, t yesterday, I checked my transcript. I got a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a message from graduate school saying, if you continue to perform like this, we will take the graduate assistantship from you. So it was amazing. It's really amazing that nowadays I teach all the difficult, difficult courses in my department at Kent State. I teach geodatabase, spatial programming. All these courses I didn't dare to, to take when I was a master student. So why I got involved in the uh, like the GIS computing, especially nowadays in I work with computer science. Uh, faculty is getting too big and SF grounds, all about big, big social data. So I, I have some good experience to show is how the open source, like it's an open source movement, it totally changed my life. How to move me from a person who really try to get hands off the, all the technical issues from this kind of person to coming into a like, kind of way to work with all these computer science uh, faculties and with uh, many, I, I have many research assistants also from STATS. So I, at the begin, my research is very much from the, at the beginning, spatial inequality and sustainability, very much human geography and economic geography. When I did my first master degree, I, I realized how amazing when you plot all the socioeconomic values on the map. So I try to say, okay, I want to learn some GIS functions. I want to click the button. Later, I find out if I click the button, it means my research will be tool driven instead of research question driven. Uh, very luckily, I, I met quite a few fantastic scholars who are both a human geographer and also an open source a computer scientists. So they guided me, saying, hey, no difficult at all, no difficult. Just uh, borrow other people's codes, modify that, and understand the logic. So it's amazing, only taking me, I mean, one semester to switch from a person who really kind of feared of all these kind of technical issues into a person who love testing research questions using the open source code. And later, after I became faculty, and for the sake of the money, I look into the big social data. And I realized the big social data, all the things I look into, social media, crime data, trajectory data, digital humanities, reminded me of my previous background in spatial inequality and sustainability. So then I integrate my expertise on open source computing and my previous the theoretical thinking so together. So for the, my uh, current research and uh, run a very successful lab at Kent State University. So theoretical, theoretically, we need space-time is the joint thinking of space-time allow us to tap into many possibilities of public policy. And for methodologically, definitely, interesting thing is uh, the challenging things to uh, couple the spatial temporal attributes of the socioeconomic dynamics. And regarding, for, for nowadays, we have many different ways to define GIS. I think more recently, it's a more mixed definition, system, science, service, studies, and now for many futures of GIS. But for open GIS, I, I have some collaborative work with Daniel Sui from Ohio State. We are looking into the eight dimension. So for the open data, I think Alex may have mentioned that. And so, Later, I will give a more in detail uh, explanation of my work in open software. Now I will skip that. And for open hardware, uh, for the thin client, the fat server, today I just submitted a second proposal with some computer engineering about flying the drone to monitor the real time uh, urban dynamics. 
So this is more like a hardware, integrated hardware and software. The open standards, because for sure, we, if we develop software, hardware, we need some standards. And uh, open, open collaboration. Uh, it's true is that nowadays, if you apply grants, it's better to have people from different disciplines and across different universities to share the resource. Uh, for the uh, open collaborations, uh, we, we are also looking to the, uh, the from space to space to place called the cognitive transition and the computational one from analysis to more like a synthesis is a more like a data fusion to relate a different data sources to look into the heterogeneous uh, data sources a fusion when we look at all the brightness of the open source movement, the, on the other dark side, the critical thinking, the looking at digital divide, the privacy, human rights, uh, and uh, all this. And also for the open publications. And uh, everyone like money, the open funding. So the the mock system the open education open learning to uh, to generally uh, to train the next generation uh, researchers and uh, educators so so that's in I, I will very much focus on the open gis the second component the second component of open gis it's about open software uh, these are two important uh, open source packages I have been getting involved in. The left side starts is space-time analysis of original system. I was the only research assistant for this NSF-funded project when I was in California doing my PhD. And uh, later, since stars focus on both visualization and uh, analysis of space-time data, um, the develop team later decided it's too stressful to focus on both. How about we focus on one? Because there are so many visualization uh, packages or interface. So we fo later we focus on only on computing. So that's that's a Python. Uh, I think now Python now released every half a month. Uh, no, every half a year. So you go can go check online. It's, it's hosted in Arizona State University under my dissertation advisor Sergio Rui. And for me, I always wonder is when I look at an attribute, I like to look at where it is in the spatial structure and where it's located in statistical distribution and how where it is located in the temporal uh, chains. So I, when I develop my methods, I always do it from very f a framework thought. It's looking to, okay, if I can bind spatial and temporal dimensions, then I look at uh, each dimension, four scales, uh, four scales from individual to global. And if I look at uh, pick up any cell, because I'm a local, spatial, spatial, local, spatial structure, global, I mean over time, it means, then I can pretty much look at uh, different socioeconomic system from the like uh, more like uh, the bottom maps is your similarity across time, over time, or the Lisa path on the top, look at like the yellow ones represent the 48 states in the US and the blue one are the China's like a, a province. So the, the China is more like have divided regional systems than US. And not only that, we work with the Department of Commerce to help them to so that's another way of open data. If the data is open but everything is in PDF how many of you really spend time read hundreds or thousands of pages of PDF? So we worked with the Department of Commerce for their, the, the, what's it, the warm notice is a, a, a large layoff. Uh, we developed some codes to convert PDF to CSV at that time and do the error debugging and uh, view the data from different perspective. It's not in any ESI software, it's totally in Python. And uh, some very recent uh, exciting work in the past uh, uh, academic year, I got two large NSF grants, for both of them from NSF. 
And I will claim it uh, for my transition. I move from socioeconomic dynamics into I call human dynamics. Because these two are very much looking to the individual data. The first is social media, social network. You look at how, how the message diffuse on the uh, network and how the virtual and the real space interact with each other. And then the second one is a look at the individual vehicles, how they move in the street network. And when I look at all of them, then help me to understand the transportation network on one side. On the other side, help me to understand how the urban area is organized. So now we are allowed, due to the, the data uh, availability, we, we can uh, understand our human dynamics all the way f from genetic to the world uh, wide. And uh, uh, for this is September 11, uh, for September 14th, we have got a um, kind of the initiative from White House asking for the smart cities. And for the smart cities, we do have some practice in my NSF grants. We will continue to apply for smart city related projects. But in my, this is just uh, published in, uh, I think ranked uh, the, the top three. It's a uh, called communication research. Yes, communication research uh, journal. We are looking into the social media to understand the uh, network structure and the communi uh, community evolution, use the Typhoon Haiyan example on Twitter. And we look at that based on this is a, a traditional, it's an analysis from communication theory, but I did all these Twitter, the identify the network, look at over time, it's a one T is for two weeks. T8 is three months after the disaster, we find build the, we, we found out this highly correlated network is highly correlated in the uh, the community network. And also for the taxi movement, we are looking into the taxi using China's Shenzhen example, and each day we got about, uh, I think, 60 million uh, samples. Uh, we have collected for several months. And for that, we are building the topic modeling about the the, the, the huge amounts of trajectory data. So they can naturally divide uh, Shenzhen into different uh, uh, regions. Uh, otherwise, it, it cannot be, it's not doable without building these, all the individual trajectories and save them in the graph database. So we can also look at uh, by the uh, text, uh, trajectory, whether it's uh, vacant or occupied, we can divide the city structure dynamically over hours by hours. So this is how I benefit from all this, starting from my, when I did my PhD, got a doctoral dissertation research improvement. That is a small amount, say 1,500. But my advisor said, hey, in the future we'll get a lot. So now don't apply too much, 1,500 to build up the framework. Then, uh, then I all the way moved through into the, the different uh, with the work with Department of Commerce, Department of Energy, NSF, and from socioeconomic dynamics to human dynamics. So that's my way of doing the research. Then I want to add more title is I do research very much from lab style, but uh, I want to make the socioeconomic research to be very fundable and recently I, I really want to ask um, more money through the, the collaboration across borders. I, my recent grounds, I count the how many disciplines got involved, work with computer science, with public health. The, in the same ground, we have computer science, engineering, civil engineering, uh, uh, communication, and uh, political science. Uh, yes, pretty much, yes. So we will get more disciplines involved. Thank you.